Hello, hello, hello. Happy Wellness Wednesday. Hello, tribe. So excited to be coming live to you today with a guest speaker or actually someone I'm going to be interviewing today. Her name is Susie and I can't wait for you to get to know her. I'm excited to be doing this today. Typically, I do my Wellness Wednesday trainings around some specific emotion or, you know, something around mindset and emotional awareness, right? Or self-love. But today um, is super special. I'm excited. As I said, I am going to be um, interviewing Ms. Susie Ayana Suttles. Uh, hopefully she'll be coming into the room in a minute. Um, how I met Susie was on Facebook. Isn't that amazing how this social media platform that I've been calling home, oof, gosh, I guess quite, quite some time now since 2000 and eight or 2000 yeah 2008 2009 i think when it went when it decided when they first got this platform together and i've been uh going live really kind of pretty much consistently for three years not necessarily in the same place but with this group um this group has been around for a little bit and i'm really excited about having this group and so as i said Susie and i we, we met on facebook as i said this is like a, a cool platform facebook is my jam and I, I love all of the amazing connections that I've been making. And so we, we are both members of the Brains Magazine community. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's an online global magazine, which reaches, um, at the last count that I had heard, a million people per month all around the world. And we share alike being both executive contributors for this wonderful online publication, and we get to share our stories. And so if you haven't had a chance to check out Brains Magazine, I will make sure that I put it in the link. Actually, I'm gonna be putting a few links at the end of this, but definitely go in there and check out some of the stories, not just from my own. And of course, I want you to check out our guest our guest today, her con contribution to the magazine, but also there's just a lot of other great authors that have been contributing to this magazine for many years. So Susie, let me tell you about her. She's a certified intuitive energy guide healer, fostering the heart of men beyond abuse. I don't know about you, but this just piqued my curiosity right from the get-go as soon as I started reading this. And I can't wait to learn more. Yes, I'm going to be learning right along with you. Susie and I first started talking about self-love when I was blessed to be a part of her podcast, Beyond Abuse, and we got to talk about the power of changing your brain. You know, the way you think and how you set your mind on the things that you believe that can become your truth if you lean into it long enough. So as I said, our friendship has now blossomed. We've started building on our connection. And the more I've gotten to know her, the more I am fascinated to learn about what she does, especially with her podcast too, because there is a lot of great podcasts on there right now. And I haven't even had a chance to listen, but I've been looking, I, I've recently been looking and I can't wait to, um, I, I can't wait to actually get into it. And her about section of her podcast is pretty cool. It simply says that it's a show about the power and benefits of using self-love and hope to overcome self-doubt, depression, anxiety, and panic attacks resulting from the trauma and abuse of our past. I love sharing my story, but I love showcasing other badass men and women who learned to turn their pain into purpose, and they're using that gift to help other men and women transform their mindset from victim to victor. I love that. There's so much to learn about Susie. I'm really excited to dive into our conversation, and I can't wait for you to meet her up close and personal. Like I said, she's truly amazing, an amazing young lady. Then you will instantly know this as soon as she starts to speak. And so with that being said, please help me welcome to the stage my beautiful new friend. Oh, how gorgeous you look. Susie Rattles. I love your middle name, Iona. That's beautiful. I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> it's Ayana, but um, thank Ayana. you. Like, man, like that, just hearing right. all of that stuff, like I'm having a very emotional day today. Um, so forgive me if I shed some tears, but, um, you know, it's it's been a journey for sure. It has been a journey for sure. And just to hear all of that, it's like, <laughs> wow. That's me. Like I'm turning all that pain 
and to purpose. And I'm helping other people to, you know, really change their mindset and go from that victim mentality to the victor because I was there. I was there. I lived so many years of my life as a victim, blaming other people for why I was the way that I was. You know, of course, in our childhoods, I mean, we, we don't have any control over that, right? But once we become an adult, we are 100% responsible for changing that dynamic. And that's hard. <laughs> that's hard work, right? So it's so easy for us to blame other people, you know? Absolutely. I, blame, I blame my children's father for, for holding me back. But I allowed, I allowed that abuse. I allowed it. There were tons of times my intuition said, leave, <laughs> get up and leave. But I wouldn't do that, you know, and I blamed him. <laughs> and now that I'm out of that situation, it's like, you know what? I allowed that, but I'm not going to allow that anymore from anybody. You know, yeah, no, I love that. Well, but before we dive right into it, I wanted to just have just have like a couple of, you know, rapid fire personal life questions. Just I want my audience, our audience here to because you were part of this tribe as well, just to kind of get a little couple of questions answered just so they can. I think this will lean into our conversation about you. So Absolutely. describe yourself using three words. Three words, um, resilient, <laughs> um, giving, and empowered. Oh, I love that. I, and I think that really com comes from, you know, what you were saying, what you do. Um, okay. okay, so there is this question, which I think probably, well, I don't know, because you're a mom, so... I don't know. Um, what would you say has been your greatest accomplishment in your life? Um, my greatest accomplishment is leaving that 20 year unhealthy abusive relationship. That's my greatest accomplishment and staying gone because so many people, I don't want to exclude it to only women because I know that there are men who are abused as well, but so many people go back. They go back. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so from that, what's been your greatest lesson learned? Because I think that kind of goes with that question. Um, is to just really love myself, know who I am and what I deserve. And when I say what I deserve, it's based upon what I have to give. So I'm, I'm coming to the relationship with everything that I have to give. And all I ask is for reciprocation. I don't ask you to do exactly what I'm doing, but reciprocate what I'm giving. Yeah. And knowing that I deserve that because I already give that to myself. So why would I accept anything less than what I'm already giving myself? I'm either going to accept an equal amount of what I'm giving to myself or somebody who's giving me more than what I'm giving. Oh, I love that. That's going to help me rise up to meet him. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, so what is, I would think this probably may lean into this because I don't know your circumstances and how you had had decided made that decision because it came down to choice um how you made the decision in you know to make that change for your life what was the best piece of advice you've ever received the best piece of advice i have ever received is to um to accept people as they are when when a person shows you who they are believe them don't paint a different picture because that's what i did i saw these red flags and i was like oh we can change that color once 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 i just love him enough you know it was that that 
I'm, a, I'm, I'm naturally a healer, okay? But sometimes healers, as healers, we want to fix people, right? And I was the fixer. <laughs> so just accept people as they are and you get to decide whether you want to participate in that relationship or not. I think that's the best advice that anybody could ever give me is that accept that person for who they are and don't try to change them because yeah. that's who they're going to be. For sure. And I think that's just an expectation that can lead to disappointment because really when you think about expectations, they really are I centered and not really we inclusive and they might be intentionally you know, based around wanting it to be me, we inclusive, but the other person has to be on board with that. And so um, that, there has to be some kind of agreement. So I love that. Well, thank you so much for taking part in this. Like I said, I usually have a few more questions, but I actually want to really just dig in because there's a lot about you. <laughs> that I don't know. Um, like I said, you have this you have a really interesting introduction on your website that immediately piqued my curiosity and I wanted to find out more. Yeah. I could have actually dove in a little bit more and started going digging, but you know what <laughs> I thought, how cool would it be if, if I, along with our listeners could learn firsthand the amazing amazingness that I think is you. So wow. I you. really just, I would love to really just dive in with All you. Right. Let's do it. So, so tell us more about yourself, because I know you started going a little bit into it, but I want you to tell us about yourself and how you got involved with what you do and why, because what you do, I think, is pretty incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I grew up in a traumatic, abusive ho household, and I didn't know any different. <laughs> you know, that's what I knew love to be. And so um, I found myself attracting the same type of relationships and I found myself in a 20 year unhealthy abusive relationship um, because the man the man's love resembled the love that I received from my mom. Mental, mental abuse, verbal abuse and emotional abuse. But of course, that's the only type of love that I knew. So I thought that that was love right that's what love was supposed to be because that was my perception of love that's the only thing that i knew and um you know just it was really now that i look back on it i in hindsight i can say it was a very uh controlling and manipulative relationship on both parts because i was trying to change him he was trying to change me we both didn't accept each other for who we were it was a lot of uh, need-based codependency um, attachments because we we didn't receive we were expecting to receive love from another person be, that we didn't have growing up right so we we lacked in each other and we were trying to get that from each other well you got to give that to yourself first you got to come into the relationship as a whole and complete individual right you got to be happy on your own you got to be joyful on your own but i didn't learn that until after i got out of that relationship so it was just a very toxic unhealthy relationship addictions um a lot of infidelity um on his part you know i i remained faithful you know um but I accepted the infidelity, you know, and listening to other people, taking on the opinions of other people, you know, because my family, of course, they're going to tell you to stay because they're used to this type of dynamic, right? This is unhealthy. So what are you talking about? What are you talking about this? You know, he's, he's abusive because there is the same dynamic, you know? So, um, in 2006, we got married in 2003. In 2006, I started to recognize, hey, you know what? Some of my childhood is really starting to reflect in this relationship. So how can I unpack this? And I started going to therapy. I asked him to attend. He said, no, I'm not doing it. So, of course, I just started to grow out of that relationship. But there was still a lot of fear I still had a lot of fear and there was a lot of psychological abuse that had occurred, not only from that relationship, but from my childhood. So 
it took me a long time to actually transition fully out of that relationship. There were times, um, there was a year that I spent without him. I moved from Ohio down here to North Carolina. He stayed there. Um, I didn't call it a separation, but that's what it really was supposed to be. But again, there was a lot of fear there. I was afraid to be by myself. I was afraid of um, really succeed, su succeeding. I didn't believe that I could really do this thing by myself. I, I thought that I needed someone else to do that. And so leaving that relationship, the universe really just showed me that, no, you didn't. No, you didn't need all that. You did. You never needed all of that. You needed to be strong on your own and depend on your own self so that you could attract the right people into your life. You know, because all of my relationships were toxic and unhealthy. My my friendships with my girlfriends, my, you know, my friendships with people from high school, you know, they're, they all were were unhealthy because we all shared the same you know, tra trauma, it was trauma bonding. We, you know, we, we shared a lot of the same addictions, you know, so we all got high and got drunk together, you know? And so when I started transitioning out of that, you know, of course, those same people were like, oh, you think you're better than us and all this other stuff, you know, because I was wanting better for myself. I was wanting different for myself. And so um, it, when I left him in 2010 to move to North Carolina, I spent 11 months by myself pursuing my goals, pursuing my dreams, things that I love. And when he came back, it was a total shift. And it was like, wow, like I, th this thing is really done. And it, it took me another four years to leave. But I finally left in 2015 and haven't been back since. And I've been doing it, me and the universe, ever since. Um, and so fostering the hearts of men is because I found myself in these relationships trying to fix men instead of really just being the intuitive divine woman and guiding them to tap into the emotions and the vulnerabilities of their own heart. I was getting in relationships with them trying to trying to do this. So I said, you know what? No more relationships for right now, right? I spent 20 years in one. Let's just go ahead and enjoy me. And I'm still want to be me because that is who I am. I love men. Regardless of anything that has happened in my past, I want to see men succeed and be the healthiest and truest version of themselves. And that's why I found myself in these relationships because that's what I wanted for them too. You know, I knew that, yeah, we all experience trauma. We all experience abuse. But guess what? You can come out of it. If I've done it, you can too. But I found myself getting into these relationships, you know. So I said, you know what? Why not just use that gift of loving men as their guide, as their mentor? You know, showing them what the love of a divine woman looks like so that they too won't get themselves in these unhealthy abusive relationships and they too can recognize the red flags because women have it too you know women have been scarred and abused so they too can recognize it and in the process i get to i get to really lead them to their heart lead them to their vulnerabilities because a lot of men were not encouraged to share their emotions you know to communicate mm -hmm. how they're feeling and a lot of them don't feel safe in their environments and doing that. So I just really wanted to provide a safe space, a, a safe environment for them to grow, um, for them to talk. Um, and if they didn't wanna talk, just be there as an encouraging force because that's who I am. That's who I've always been. Even in all the toxicity, all the unhealthiness, that's who I was at the core. And I just really needed to get back to her and then use that gift to to foster the heart of man. So I say foster because I'm not their I'm not their queen. <laughs> I'm not their queen, but I want them to be able to find her. But you can't do that until you tap into your own. You gotta you gotta really marry those energies between yourself, and you gotta love that feminine back to wholeness within yourself. They do. I had to learn to I had to love the masculine within myself so that I could marry those energies and be okay and whole and balanced and within myself and that's what really what it's about it's about being balanced within yourself changing your mindset you know we, we discussed that when i had your um 
when I had you on for the podcast, because that is essential. We we were told we were fed all these negative, all these negative things were dumped into us, which led us to believe that this is really what all that we deserve. And, and that's not true. So that's that's why I do fostering the heart of man. No, I love that. And so and you said that for you, a lot of it, you were like you said, the fix it person. And, and I think a lot of women tend to do that. They feel like, okay, they've got part of what they were asking for. And maybe the red flags might have been showing themselves, but not necessarily were they paying attention to them. And so once they start revealing themselves, then they get into that fix it mode. Okay, well, maybe I can fix this because he's got all this other stuff going for him, but maybe I can be the one to fix this. And I think it's, it's when we put ourselves in that place is when it can make it worse in a yeah. way because they didn't come into the relationship to be fixed. Right. <laughs> yeah. And right. so it's just learning and it comes from, like you said, it comes from within, like we are only responsible for ourselves. Yes. And so, uh, and they are responsible for them. Yeah. So the, their happiness is on them. Our happiness is on ourselves. That's why I debunked recently with some people and I said, I don't really believe in that whole phrase of happy wife, happy life, because right. then you're seeing that all the responsibility is on him to make right. you happy. Yes. That is, that's not really fair. And no. so that's why I feel like it's just, it comes from our own choice. Like you made the choice. It's our choice. We make the decision. We're going to do whatever it is to honor ourselves and to do that. And so, so you talked about like, okay, you found you know, you found that time, that 11 months that were set aside that you had that, this total freedom to start like looking inward and, and realizing what you wanted and who you were and the things that in life that really, you know, that you had a desire for and, and your passion and purpose. And so what did that look like for you when you started building out your self love? Like, what was that for you that when he came back, you noticed the shift that you were no longer that same person? Hmm, that's a good question. I really, I really don't even know what it was. Like, um, I really can't even pinpoint what it was. It was just like, it was just like an awakening to, to, to say, um, you know what? I've been in a one-sided relationship. I've been supporting this man throughout the entire relationship and he does not support me at all. I think the one time I was a youth minister and I, I love doing it because it was with teenagers. I know I'm meant to work with like teens and stuff like that. I love working with teenagers because of my personality. Right. And it, you know, I, I cooked dinner, you know, I was, I was there, you know, making dinner, working, you know, doing all the responsibilities. And on Wednesday, one night a week, Wednesdays, there was Bible study. And I was, you know, in the youth ministry. And every Wednesday, he would pop an attitude and say, the kids shouldn't be eating this late, like all this other stuff. And it's like one day a week, one day a week, does not make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. And if you are so concerned about them eating on Wednesdays, how about you make your off day a Wednesday and you have dinner prepared so that we all eat before Bible study begins? How about that? No, he wasn't. Very selfish, very one-sided. And I think it was at that moment, it was just like, you know what, this man really has never supported any of my dreams, anything that I wanted to do. But when he needed the support, I was always there. He could always count on me, but I could never count on him, never. And that got me into the motion of really trying to figure out what I want to do. And so there was this time and space in 2013 where I had started working on my credit because I was I was I was out. Right. And then I don't know what it was, but I was like, um, you know, oh, I wanted a house. I wanted to build a house and I knew that my income wouldn't do it. So I stayed because he had the income. Right. 
And, and during, during the whole process, I was like, I should really back out of this. I should really get out of this. But long story short, ended up building a house with him. And the next year I left. The next year I left. Yep. Because I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be there. I was miserable, miserable in that space. And here I, here I had everything that I wanted, right? Seemingly had everything that I wanted. I had two kids, the new house built from the ground. 3,000 square feet, you know, like I had all these things that I had dreamed of and it was like, but I'm not happy. I'm not happy internally. So it's time for me to get out of this situation and go get happy again internally. And that's what I did. That's what I did. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's unfortunate that we do look externally for things to make us happy like oh if i have this house it'll make me happy if i have this job it'll make me happy if i make x amount of dollars it will make me happy uh and and it's really again it comes down to just the choice of just choosing to be happy and i know it it sounds easier said than done and of course it is uh easier to say it than than for it to be a reality because then comes the work like really like building on it and doing the things that you can support yourself because Yes. I always talk about supporting evidence, meaning like if you have a belief about something, if it's true, what's your supporting evidence to support that belief? If it's a negative belief and you have negative support, then it's getting a, a just just taking a closer look at that and getting to the root of how did that become part of your thinking? And so me, and again, of course, you've shared your story about your background. And so a lot of what you were drawn to was what you knew. And that became a part of your reality. But over time, when you had that, um, that moment to yourself where you started doing some self-reflection and started looking inward, that's when things started to change. And so you may not have had the um, aha realization of one thing that made you right. decide to go. Mm-hmm. But uh, over this time, I'm sure over the 11 months and then can carry forward after when you finally decided to leave, there are there some things that you do now today that you might have adopted then and you're still carrying out now and perhaps maybe you've added to it that help you to honor who you are, like taking care of yourself you know, because there, it, it's important that we look after ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. And so, what does that look? I know you've already talked about your spiritual. You know, you've got your faith, mm-hmm. but what about the mental and the physical part? Because we sometimes tend to like maybe only look at one, thinking that's enough. And and really, it takes all three to be fully healthy. Yeah. I think to really feel yeah, like yeah, absolutely. Um, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I think it really takes, um, I, I have this program that I'm working on. It's, it's really six pillars. It's the mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, relational, and financial. You got to be holistic in all of those areas, you know, um, and holistic for me is different for Leslie, you know, and that's what I try to tell people is that, you know, like, but my thing is you have for mental, you have to have some sort of morning routine. You have to, um, because that keeps you in the right frame of mind, I believe, you know. Um, so my morning routine looks like um, getting up in the morning and just really loving on the universe, just really being grateful. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, thank you. You know, I'm grateful because I woke up today and then I'm just, you know, like I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm able to, you know, walk and talk that I was able to, you know, um, see another day that, uh, you know, that I'm alive and well, I'm clothed in my right mind, you know, um, just really speaking over myself and, and thanking the universe for everything that I have, just being grateful. So, you know, I, I thank the universe for the roof over our heads. I thank the universe for the car that I drive. I thank the universe for everything that I have in my apartment because it helps to serve me and my daughter, you know, so just getting myself in that space of gratitude early, first thing in the morning is what helps me because then when the negative thoughts do come, because they do, that's what, that's what they want to do. They want to come, you know, um, it helps you to realize what you do have. You know, I have 
so much. And guess what? Like, I have a lot of peace now. I have a lot of joy now, you know, because I'm not in that unhealthy situation. You know, if I, if I can't have someone that mutually supports me, you know, the way that I support them, if I can't have someone that's happy on their own, they're not looking to me to be their source of happiness. Cause that was the thing after I, you know, after I realized my, my internal struggles and started to get happy with myself, he was still unhappy with his self, you know, and he was expecting me to be his happiness. But guess what? This was the whole relationship because we both were expecting each other to be our happiness. But then well, that 11 months apart, I found my happiness. I found the things that really bring me joy and the things that I love to do. And he what he hadn't found that and he was not about to even go and try to do that. So um, but I dance. That's my physical. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, what do you do for exercise? I dance. I, I love dancing. I'm going to start back doing my yoga um, because I'm noticing my body is a little stiff. And sometimes I wake up and it's sore and it's like, yeah, I got to start doing those stretches because they help. Um, but definitely my morning routine. And then um, I learned about the, the chakras and how they're the seven energy centers in our body. They're directly connected to the systems within our body. And so just making sure that I align those every single morning. And I tell you, when I don't align those things, I'm, I'm in a funky space and I don't like that space. And so I make sure that I am aligning. I, I'm making sure that I get up. I'll, I'll leave everything else behind. I have to align my chakras every single morning. And then I speak an affirmation over myself, you know, just, um, just saying, you know, may I be at peace with all other beings. May other beings be at peace with me. May I forgive and be forgiven, you know, so just, just going through that whole thing and reminding myself that I am deserving of a full, happy, joyous, loving life. Um, but everyone else is too. Everyone else is too. But you got you got to go through the healing. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck because they don't they don't want to do the internal work that's required. They don't want to you know self reflect and become self aware because that's a scary thing. You know, especially if they've lived their life <laughs> uh, not so grandly, you know, they have a lot of demons, I guess you can call it, or things that they're not proud of. But once you get through that healing phase, you realize that there's no shame. It happened because that's what you knew at the time. And now that you know better, you can go forward and be a better person, be that loving being, because that's who we are at the core. You know, we took on these dysfunctions being born into these dysfunctional families, you know, but we are love and light at the, at the core. We just got to tap into that, that truth. Yeah, absolutely. And now I love how you started with gratitude because I feel like when you center yourself and you're focused and you're grateful for everything, and that can be just as just, I woke up today. Yeah. I'm breathing. I had a nice, soft, comfortable bed to sleep in. <laughs> yes. Just simple things in life you can be grateful for. But we take those things for granted, right? And if we start to think, okay, maybe what I should be thinking about is I have this, but there are people who don't. So I should really be grateful because I'm very blessed to have this. And if it's so simple of a small thing, it doesn't matter because you have it. Um, and, and it's just being able to do that. I, I know you talked about forgiveness, which is very powerful and it's very important. Who we were, that doesn't define who we are. Yes. This is a path that got us to where we are today. Yes. Now, all of us have things in our past that yes. we're so proud of that we did, things that we said. But if we're, if we're leading into this place where we want to be the best version of ourselves, we show up that way, whether it's for our children, for the young people in our communities, for other women that we mentor or other people that we mentor or other pe friends, family, all of that. Yeah. When we are l allowing ourselves to just, you know, say, okay, that's who I am now. There, 
you should be able to for, be able to forgive yourself for the the who you were before because yes. i always truly believe and i and i've talked about this before in my group here is that um we have the right the inherent right and privilege to rewrite our story whenever we want to so it's not like you have to hold your past does not have to come with you yes. it doesn't have to be a part of your everyday life yes it's a part of what happened to you but when you think of the word happened it's a past tense word meaning it's no longer and yes. so because it's in the past it's better for you to be able to forgive yourself for bringing that with you and allow yourself to say, okay, that happened and it's not who I am anymore. And this is who I am today. And this is how I want to live my life and live from there, live from that happy state of mind, that grateful state of mind. That is your privilege. You're right. You can write, rewrite your story every day. You can have a bad day today and say, it's okay. Give yourself some grace and say, you know what? I might've messed up today. I can now move forward from this moment and just reset. And I believe you can reset every single day, every single moment when you think that something needs to, to be tweaked a little bit, right? Um, I necess I definitely was not in this space. I had no clue what self love was. <laughs> right. Um, and I've been married now um, 25, uh, just over 25 years. Wow. And in the beginning, my marriage, I was a completely different woman. Um, I allowed maybe for some, just some, I guess, character traits in my husband. I allowed that to be okay because I didn't really honor me. Mm -hmm. And when over time, as I started going through this whole journey, of changing myself, wanting more for my life, doing better, and then finally getting into coaching and realizing this is my dream, my passion, my purpose, my why, and what I want to do. And and also, you know, making sure that I have the supporting evidence. Like I said, there's supporting evidence for the negative, but there's also the supporting evidence for the positive. And so knowing that that might been, have been who I was before, but now I have my core values. This is where I live from, this place. This is the person that I am and how I want to, to, to live. The last, especially the last few years, my marriage has become much better. It's like done a 180 just yeah. because I found my peace within me. I learned to find my happiness within myself. Mm -hmm. And over time, that allowed to influence him. I wasn't trying to change him specifically because it was up to him. And if he didn't change, then I wouldn't be saying here that I married 25 years. He decided for his own well-being that he wanted to be this different person, that he wanted to be a better person, not just for our marriage, not just for, yeah. our, for himself. Right. So that's, uh, that's why I love what you were talking about, bringing it back to what you do with this fostering of men of men of the heart of men is because you talk about it, it really is about that as women we're the nurturers we're the caregivers we're the ones that people come to when they they have a question when they um they need guidance the men in our lives and um they might go to their guy friends and talk about some things but typically if they have a, a woman in their life that they can lean on they'll go to that woman whether it's a friend a mother whoever a relative however that works out and they're looking for that guidance. And so women, if we can empower ourselves to be yeah. strong for ourselves, to I, I call it filling your cup daily by doing the things that, you know, get you aligned with your day to keep you grounded and focused. Like you said, aligning your chakras, aligning yourself so that you have set yourself up for success for your day, that when someone needs you, you have more than enough to give so you don't feel like your energy is depleted and you feel good about yourself and so i love that that what you do is allowing women to see that you can be this person and th this person for him and if he is willing to receive that willing yes, yes. <laughs> because i think a lot of it is too is that it's not forcing it upon them but when they, they it really does i'm sorry but it does work I don't have to say anything and it's just working. Yeah. You're changing yourself from within. This mm -hmm. is who you are. You're reflecting this person and 
there is no other way for someone to reflect back. It's it's the same thing. You walk into a room, you have two people, you see one who looks grumpy and one who looks happy. The person you're going to gravitate to is the one who looks happy. It's just the law of attraction. And so you know, I, I love that what you're doing. I know we could probably talk on and on and on. It's just amazing what you do. Um, your podcast, like I said, I was looking around. I have to say that I haven't listened to a lot. Mm -hmm. I have been really super crazy busy and that's just on me right yeah. now, but I definitely am going to, because I was looking, especially your last few episodes, I was looking at the, um, the divine, the, the divine feminine. Yes. We've talked about the chakras and the divine feminine is really powerful when, especially when it comes from within and, yes. and it's not just women who have the divine feminine in them. It's yes. men as well. And I think people yes. don't realize that they think, Oh, divine feminine. So that's woman, but it's not, mm -hmm. it is, there is embracing, like you said, the masculine and the feminine energy within ourselves and having that balance. And so yes. I, I really, really am excited about getting into that. Mm -hmm. um, I, as I was saying, self-love to me is really important because when you start honoring yourself, like who you are, you fill your cup daily, especially with the things that make you feel really good about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, that includes your energy, your mindset, your nutrition, hydration as well. Really important what you feed yourself. Yes. Um, um, and as also what you feed yourself as far as the content that you digest through social yes. media. <laughs> podcast, it really does make a huge difference in how you show up in your world. And that's why I, I am really like pushing, you know, I'm not so much pushing, but really encouraging the yeah. listeners of this group to go and check out your podcast because there are some women in this group who I think you would definitely have this alignment with them that they're going to really resonate with you, especially with some of the things that you talk about. Um, and some of your experiences around specific things. Um, I don't need to go into them right now, but some, cause I don't want to release, you know, right. break one's confidence in the group, but I really encourage them to go and check it out. And I'll put the link in there. Cause I am going to link, um, well, we're going to talk about links. So I'm going to, I'll reach out to you as well, um, but I'm going to get your links because I want to link it directly with this video at the afterwards so that they can not only re-listen if they haven't watched it or watch it back again if they want to, but they'll also have access to you because, like I said, I think there's some women in this group definitely who would, who could really um, – benefit from having this connection with you Absolutely. um so um now that we've talked about that i know you kind of briefly talked about this this program that you have coming up um when it, is that something that's still in the works is it something that's going to be coming out soon um so yeah it's still in the works it's actually been in the works for uh, quite some time now but my my release probably is not going to be until uh, 2022 because I'm actually more focused on my free community, which is the um, from uh, it's living an empowered life. Uh, it's not on any social platforms. It's on a platform all by itself. So there's an app like you don't have to have a Facebook profile. And that's really what I wanted. I wanted something where people don't have to a lot of people are moving away from Facebook, moving away from Instagram and stuff like that. So I really wanted something that was like dedicated to itself. Um, but it's just living an empowered life. And all that I'm doing in there is just encouraging people, um, doing challenges, you know, weekly challenges to help them strengthen the love for themselves. And then I'm doing um, a weekly live meeting um, just for any Q&A if you want to then, you know, like whatever is going on, it's kind of like a, a check in um, for the week. So um, and and I, I am actually moving away from Facebook and Instagram um, because I have a lot of I have an audience on TikTok. So what I'm going to start doing on there is lives there as well, just to do mental health check in, because that really is important, you know, because you know, especially as women, men too. I don't, I don't ever want to, you know, just, you know, separate the two because there's no separation because just like women have a lot on their plate, so do men, you know, and yeah, women might have the 
the the home, the kids, the job, you know, but then men have society and, you know, all this other stuff. So we all have these weights on our shoulders and it's good to check in to see how you're doing mentally and how can I assist you in that area? And, you know, all I'm doing is just sharing what I use. So like the divine feminine, that's actually a Deepak Chopra meditation experience. It's 21 days, but I've been doing those meditation experiences since I left that relationship since 2016. And they have helped with my growth because it seems like every time they come out, it's like the universe is like, yeah, you need this at this time in your life. So that's what I'm doing on the podcast is just sharing that with other people, because if I can help other people, you know, to grow along with me, that's really what it's all about. That's what life is all about. We're here to grow together. You know, we're not here to change people. We're not here to fix people. We're not here to heal people. We are our own healers. We have that power to change our unhealthy behaviors and patterns. But sometimes we need a little assistance. And so that's why I say I'm guiding you guys through this experience. And, you know, I do a little talking before and after. But, um, you know, it's, it's really just tuning into who you are and tapping into that divine identity that's you, the divine feminine and the masculine that's within you. Because the divine feminine does empower and inspire us all. But we have to get to that that place of recognizing her power, you know? Yeah, no, I love that. Well, I, I'm really um, happy that you came on today because, as I said, I didn't really know everything about you either. So it was <laughs> fun to learn. It's always nice to get to know someone more. And I really love your story. I think we have some things in common. Uh, and I know that there's some women in, in the group um, that I, I'm for certain are going to have this connection with you as well. Um, I, I typically ask where you can be reached, but like I said, I'm going to get all gather all that information from you and then I'm going to link it directly with this video because I would really, I think it would be really great if the women in the community could even t check out your living an empowered life if they wanted to go off, off the site to check out your, 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 um, your platform. Cause I think again, I'm, the type of person someone might say, well, why are you allowing another coach to maybe take people off of the platform? And it's, for me, it's, I believe that I'm aligning myself with women who are heart-centered, who care about other people who want their the best interest for them. And that's who I am. And so if my, if, if, if the people in this community feel like there's like there's oh there's something about Susie's program or her her podcast or her offline um, off social media platform where I can get really valuable you know private and and really good information, I would rather empower that woman to go there. It's not about me, okay? And that's that's who I am. I would so for I I don't feel like that this is like oh well I'm just saying yeah go away from me. I'm saying no. I want you to go where you feel that the draw, the pull the the relationship where you feel like you can get the most the most of that you that you need for yourself. That maybe someone has something more to offer you than I can. I have no problem with that. So I think we're the same there. That's why I do that's why I do the interviews on the podcast because it's like I can't do this alone. Yeah. You may not resonate with everything I say, but if I can present somebody to you to say, here's another person. And if you feel like their story resonates with you or you can learn something from them, then by all means, because there's no lack here. There's no lack, there's no competition. And I think when we get out of that state of mind, life just flows so much better because you could be a conduit, you could be a sending station. And if somebody goes, guess what? You're probably gonna get four or five more. You know, like yeah. people think that, oh my goodness, if one leaves, then that's affecting me. And it's like, no, the universe will send you everything and everyone that you need. But when you, you have to get out of that space, you have to get out of that mentality of that's my competition. There's lack. I have to hold on to everybody that I have. And, and, and yeah. that's, that's not growth. That's yeah, not I, to I agree. 
I agree with you. And it's like, even if I had a client who I work with and once we're finished working together and they've, they've received what they've needed and they've moved on with their life and they are now self-dependent. That is like yeah. my heart smells yeah. with that. Because I don't want you walking away dependent upon me for you to live your life. Yeah. I want you to walk away from me so feeling so full of joy and gratitude that you had the experience, but that now you have the tools that you are yeah. in your tool belt that is your yeah. supporting evidence to keep you moving and being the best version yeah. of yourself. So Absolutely. yeah, so this was amazing. Thank yeah. you so much Absolutely. for coming Thank out. Thank you for having me. Uh, um, um, would it be possible for me to get a recording so I could put it on my um, YouTube channel? Yeah, I definitely, I typically don't take them off of my group, um, but I, I definitely think this would be great because and, you know, it's like for both of us, it's maybe someone wants to come into the uh, to this community and bring, you know, yeah. needs a community like this and vice versa to hear Absolutely. you. So, yeah, I still I have that. all of your contact information from our last video so I can just copy and paste it yeah. and put it in there. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm excited. Well, yeah. thank you. So I hope that you all had. Um, appreciated listening and hearing from beautiful Susie because like I told you as soon as she starts speaking you would know what I mean when I say that she is quite an amazing young lady it's so nice to actually have this platform that has allowed me to meet uh, somewhat some amazing women but you know to bring me into contact with other heart-centered other heart-focused women who only want the best for all of you out there um, and want you to be the best version of yourself every day. Um, so I, as, as, I, as I promise and I've said, I will get all of the information that I need for links and everything from Susie and I will make sure that I post the video. The video will be posted on its own, but I'm going to repost it with all her links so that if you wanna reach out to her directly, you can. She is also a member of this group. So if you wanna reach out to her right now because you just can't wait, go for it and you can have a conversation offline, DM her and get to know her. Um, but again, definitely when you see the post, you see the links, check out the podcast. There's uh, some amazing episodes. I think you're up to, you've got quite a few episodes. Uh, I'm not sure what number you are at because I haven't had a chance to go through them all, but yeah, there's some like really good topics I can't wait to get into. <laughs> I'm like, really excited. Over 300 episodes. I yeah. Think. Yeah, so definitely check it out. Okay, guys, well, thank you. Um, don't go anyway. Don't go away, uh, Susie. I'm just going to end the broadcast, but everyone, thank you. And um, I will be posting some other things that are coming up later. I will go live probably and just give you an update. But thank you again for tuning in, and uh, we will see you again soon. Bye.